is the complete abandonment of the salah. When someone does not pray at all. Have you met anyone like that? His name is Muhammad. You know, he's a born Muslim and everything. Muhammad, I just give it as an example. He could be Rabi, Ali, whatever you want. The point being, he's a Muslim supposedly. However, he does not establish the salah. A lot of confusion arises. Um, is this a Muslim or not? Is he a believer or not? Even though the scholars have differed concerning the ruling on this matter, tonight I will be presenting to you, inshallah, the superior and most accurate opinion, which is that the one who doesn't do salah is an infidel. He is an apostate. He is a kafir, a disbeliever. Shocking? I know. Because you may have some family members who don't pray. And you say, and the lecturer is doing takfir on my family members. He's taking them outside of Islam. I say, I didn't do that. Allah made that declaration in the Quran. And so did the Prophet Sallallahu in the Sunnah. When I present the evidence, evidences to you, then you will make your own judgment. Evidence number one. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجِرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ Let us deal with the first part. Shall we treat the Muslims like the criminals? What is the matter with you? How do you judge? The first point being is that Allah is indicating that His wisdom, His knowledge, His justice entails that a Muslim and a criminal are not to be treated the same. Okay? <coughs> They're not the same. Then in the following verses, Allah went on to describe the qualities of the criminals until He said, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ تَرْهَقُهُمْ ذِلَّةً وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ Then Allah described to us the affair of these criminals whom Allah said they're not like the Muslims on the Day of Judgment. Their affair on the Day of Judgment. Allah said, on the day where the shin will be uncovered, that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has one, unlike that of His creation. And they will be called to prostrate, but they will not be able to do so. In the hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu explained that these people who used to, you know, either not pray or show off in the dunya, when the Muslims will do sujood to Allah, their backs will become hard and they will not be able to make sujood. And Allah said in the verse after, and they used to be وَقَدْ قَانُ يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ They used to be called to prostrate while they were sound. So what is the quality? Because they did not pray in the dunya, they will not be able to pray and prostrate to Allah in the life to come. And Allah began the verse by saying, Shall we treat the Muslims like the criminals? They are not the same. So He made the opposite of a Muslim, a criminal. The Muslims pray, those on the Day of Judgment, when they will be said to them, <coughs> to make sujood. They will be unable to make sujood because of their criminal acts. Consequently, they're not among the Muslims. Evidence number one. Evidence number two. مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ When the people of Jahannam will be questioned, what made you enter into Saqqar, one of the names of Jahannam? The first thing they will say, we were not of those who prayed. We did not, we, we used to abandon the salah, we did not. Evidence number three, the one we quoted earlier. فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّ إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا So they were followed, there came after them successors who abandoned the salah, and they followed their desires, they shall receive or meet evil. Then the ayah after says, except, there's an exception, the one who taba, repents. Tab amen, what does it mean amen? Believe. Believed in the past. You mean <coughs> believe, to believe as a present tense. Amen is in the past. Wa amila salihan and he does righteous deeds. The ulama say this is very fundamental. If at the time of abandoning the salah, they were still believers, then it would have been sufficient to say except those who repent and do righteous deeds. But the following ayah added an exception, a condition, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنْ And they believed, meaning at the time of abandoning the salah, they were not believers. So it was required of them to repent, 
to believe and then to do righteous deeds. Powerful, powerful evidence cannot be refuted. You want more? I will give you more. فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةِ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ When Allah wanted to make the distinction between the Muslims and the Kuffar, He said subhanahu wa ta'ala, So if they repent, establish the salah, pay the zakah, then they are your brothers in faith. They are your brothers in the deen. Meaning before they do so, <coughs> these three, they're not our brothers. And the only time the brotherhood is negated is when the person is not a Muslim. There's more. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ مُرْكَعُوا لَا يَرْكَعُونَ وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ <coughs> And is, when it is said to them, bow, do ruku' they bow not. Then the next ayah said, so woe on the day to the beliers. Allah called those who are called to make ruku' and refuse to make ruku' as people who are belying the deen of Allah. They don't believe. He called them mukaddibin. Someone who denies and belies and does not accept something. Evidences that they are what? Disbelievers. More. We have the hadith or a number of narrations from the Prophet ﷺ. First, a hadith Jabir in Sahih Muslim. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bayna rajuli wa bayna al-kufri tarqu salah. Between a man or a woman, but usually the context is addressing the men because the audience was predominantly men. And this is just the way it is, not that the women are excluded. Between a man and disbelief is the abandonment of the salah. You see this narration? Between a man and kufr and disbelief is abandoning the salah. In another narration, the hadith of Buraida, <coughs> the Prophet said, Al ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahum as salah. Faman tarakaha faqad kafar. The covenant between us and them is prayer. Whosoever abandons it has disbelieved. Whosoever abandons it has disbelieved. In other narrations, when uh, the, the, the Prophet ﷺ told the, Mus the Muslims that there will come a time where the people in charge, the people in charge will be doing some heinous acts that you will not approve of. They told them, O Messenger of Allah, shall we go and fight against them? Afala nuqatiluhum? He said, La, no, as long as they establish the salah. So he made the point that this allowed them from fighting against the people in charge, the rulers, is them abandoning, is them fulfilling and safeguarding the salah. In another narration, he said, No, do not find them. Illa an tarawu kufran bawahan and fihi min Allahi sultan aw kama kala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, In another narration, do not fight them unless you see clear, manifest disbelief, which you have evidence from Allah that they are disbelievers. So if they abandon the salah, this becomes al kufrul bawah. See the point and the link? Clear. We have a third narration which was narrated by Imam Ahmad ibn Habban and it was authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, wherein he mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentioned salah. Then he said, whoever keeps the salah, whoever fulfills the salah, it will be for him light, uh, it will be light, excuse me, let me uh, light, evidence and salvation on the day of judgment. And whoever does not maintain the salah, it will not be light, it will not be evidence, and it will not be salvation for him on the day of judgment, and he will be gathered in the company of Qarun, Fir'aun, Haman, and Ubay ibn Khalaf. And he will be gathered in the company of Qarun. You know Qarun, the one whom Allah caused the earth to swallow. You know Fir'aun, who he was. You know Haman, his minister. And Ubay ibn Khalaf, one of the most evil among the kuffar of Quraysh, who was a businessman. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't establish the salah, you'll be gathered with the most wicked of people. What does that mean? Can a Muslim be gathered with Fir'aun? Would a Muslim be gathered with Fir'aun? A'udhu Billah. Impossible. Because no matter how evil this Muslim is, whatever he has from Iman will keep him far away from a person like Fir'aun, who's among the biggest kafara and tawaghit in the world. So what will make this person be gathered with them? Abandoned in the salah. Because that makes him an apostate from Islam. So then the situation is serious. Uh, of course, <coughs> there are many narrations, time does not allow. But I will quote to you something that is very realistic. Umar radiallahu used to say, لا حظ في الإسلام لمن ترك الصلاة. There is no room in Islam for one who abandons the salah. Ibn Hazm narrated that Abu Huraira, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Ibn Abbas, 
Ibn Umar, and other among the Sahaba. In fact, we don't know a single Sahabi or another opinion. They used to say, if someone abandoned a single Salah, deliberately, until the time went out, he has disbelieved and apostated. And we don't know of a Sahabi who opposed that position. If someone, you know, it's Asr time, and he's watching his interesting, you know, soccer match, and the time of Maghrib comes in, while he's still watching, at this very moment, this person has left the religion of Islam. This is the fatwa of who? This fatwa of who? Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, Umar, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhum wa ardan. These are the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This was their fatwa. So we need to be mindful of that. There's more. Abdullah <coughs> uh, ibn Shaqiq, one of the Sahaba said, the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not consider any good deed which is abandoned to constitute disbelief except Salah. Anything else which was left or abandoned, it was questionable. But if anyone abandoned the Salah, they had no dispute. And the only thing they agreed upon that abandoned in the Salah constituted disbelief and rejection of the religion of Islam and apostation from the religion after being part of it. Tayyip. So this was the first level abandoned in the Salah in totality. I hope that none of us insha'Allah we will, will ever suffer this in our lives. Furthermore, if we have suffered this in our previous lives, then we don't want to go back ever again. Right? We should strive. And in order for us to be protected by Allah, we need to, you know, we need to, we need to exert ourselves. We need to make some effort. Because abandoning the salah is not a joke. Dying without being among those who prayed will guarantee someone eternity in the hellfire. So brothers and sisters in Islam, whether ourselves have shortcomings or our family members, it is our obligation to enlighten them. It is our obligation to educate them. We need to present to them these verses. Whether they agree, whether they agree that it is this belief or not, it doesn't matter as much as it is the reminder. Allah promising someone Jahannam if they don't pray. How can someone believe? This is what Ibn al-Qayyim said. He has a book called uh, As-Salah wa Hukmu Tariqiha. Salah and the ruling on the one who abandons it. He said, we understand the evidences. Let's deal with it logically. How can someone know that Allah had commanded the Salah from above the seven heavens in the Isra? He made it so special. He made it one of the pillars of Islam. The second after the Shahada. And all these virtues were given. All the, uh, all the Anbiya. The common thing between them was the Salah. The Salah. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا And command, enjoin your family to establish the Salah and be patient upon doing so. How can someone believe and then abandon the Salah? Won't you be afraid? I mean, come on. We are afraid of human beings. If someone told one of us that your boss is going to walk in on you in your office and if he sees you not doing anything, you will be fired, we will all be afraid. Right? Your belief in the fact that there's a manager who may walk in on you will prevent you from sitting like this in the office. You will do anything. You pull out old papers and pretend that you're writing something. Why? Because you believe that if he really walked in on you, you're out. You see what I'm saying? So if this is the case with a belief with a manager in something petty like you know, a, a job, how can someone believe in Allah and the last day and resurrection and Jahannam and punishment and then not be able to pray? It doesn't make any sense. Logically, this person cannot be a believer. And, if, and what the people consider belief is called satanic knowledge. Like Iblis. Doesn't Iblis know that Salah is obligatory? Does Iblis pray? He knows. He has no doubt. He's whispering to me and you on the Salah all the time. Trust me. He knows what's up. He knew Allah and the oneness of Allah. He knew the angels. Iblis had complete knowledge of what Allah had given him. Of the things that we're supposed to know. But does that make him a believer? What do we call this? Satanic knowledge. Knowledge that does not transform, it does not materialize in submission. It is worthless. It is worthless. So then, you cannot be a believer and abandon the salah. You cannot be. So we need to be very, very, very careful with our family members. Our aunties, uncles, you know, those elder, you know, uh, generation who believe that they know far more than we do. And so they will be abandoning most of the teachings of Islam because, wallah, we know. We still have to advise them. My grandpa, my uncle, the salah. Allah may punish you. Bring the verses, say, read. Read my uncle. You know, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ 
الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون